This is the compound intensity game, which goes along with lesson 17 and lesson 18 in your friendly chemistry textbook. The compound intensity game has two levels, level 1 and level 2. Level 1 goes with lesson 17 and level 2 goes with lesson 18 in your textbook. In this video we're going to introduce you to both lessons 1 and lessons 2 in order for you to be fully prepared as you move from lesson 17 into lesson 18. Now compound intensity is a board game and the, the board part of the game can be found in your student edition and what we would suggest is you make photocopies of those two pages in, your, in that uh, teacher edition and then tape them to a piece of cardboard or in this case we've gone ahead and laminated it and then taped it onto a piece of fiberboard in order to make play uh, more easy. Uh, in your manipulative set you'll find uh, two decks of cards and these just we just had made copies of these in colors yours will just be uh, white cards uh, and you'll have a cation deck and an anion deck so you'll need to cut those out and then on the board there's a place for you to place the cation deck and then likewise a place for the anion cards uh, to go there. Uh, you'll also need a, a dice uh, in one of the early first pages of your uh, manipulative set there is a little uh, pattern you can cut out and uh, you can build your own dice or any sort of spinner or dice uh, works and then you'll need some playing pieces uh, for the teams or for your students to play with and again these can be any small little objects uh, that you uh, might find uh, just so that each team has their own uh, marker their own playing piece all right. Uh, now the game is set up uh, where the players uh, can play individually, or you can set them up in teams. Uh, we suggest that you play no more than two uh, students per team. Uh, two is an ideal number uh, if you can manage that. And if you have a larger class, you may uh, find that making multiple sets of these uh, to uh, set around the classroom and then you can divide your uh, group of students into uh, teams of two and then have uh, three to four teams in around uh, one board. Now the way the game works is that there's a, a series of squares uh, around the perimeter of the board which requires that the student perform, the teams perform a, a certain task in relation to uh, the cards uh, of the game. Uh, if we go ahead and look at some of these uh, uh, tasks here uh, in the different spaces, uh, the first one here we see is anion. Uh, if a student were to were to roll roll a one, uh, they move their playing piece one space forward, and they would land on this anion space here. Uh, when a student lands on the anion space. Uh, that means they just choose an anion card, turn it over, and reveal that card to all the teams uh, in the game. Uh, in this case, we uh, pull the uh, card iodide. Uh, the job, if you just land on an anion or a cation space, is just to identify uh, the symbol and charge uh, for that anion. And so on their uh, team's piece of paper uh, that each team will have, uh, what they'll do is they'll just write the symbol and charge, in this case iodide, so it'll be an I minus one. And they'll keep that uh, pretty much hidden from view. Uh, now all other uh, teams playing will also write down the symbol and charge uh, for this anion. Now the team whose turns it in uh, turns it is, uh, will then show that their answer to you and uh, if it's correct they'll earn that that number of points there so in this case that team will earn 10 points. Now if that team has a mistake in their symbol and charge, let's say they put I minus 2 uh, and had an incorrect charge, what you'll do then is announce to all the teams uh, playing the game that there's a chance to steal. And what that means is uh, the other uh, teams who have also written on their paper 
uh, the symbol and charge for iodide, if they have it correct, they'll earn those 10 points. So let's say we have two other teams playing and this the team seated over here does have it correct. They will steal those 10 points and if the other uh, team playing also has it correct, they too can earn the 10 points. Uh, the team whose turn it was who got it incorrectly earns no points for that round. So then each team is responsible for keeping uh, their own uh, point uh, running tally of their points. Okay, so, uh, and then that used car then is returned back uh, to the bottom bottom of the deck. Let's look at some of the other spaces now that a student or team might land on. Uh, uh, in addition to the anion uh, space, there's also cation spaces. So again, they would just draw a cation card and identify the symbol in charge for the cation. Uh, in level one of the game, uh, uh, another space that they'll find is one that just says compound formula. Okay, compound formula. Uh, in order to write a compound, obviously they'll need a, a cation and an anion card. So we'll just do an example here. Uh, let's say this team uh, landed on compound formula, and so the cards that they uh, uh, picked would be barium peroxide. And again, they'll reveal this to all players uh, uh, in the game. And then on their own paper, they'll go about writing the symbol and charges for barium peroxide, the compound. So they have Ba plus 2 and peroxide, O2 minus 2. And then they'll do their parentheses and then they'll have to do their subscripts below uh, to get the appropriate uh, compound formula. Uh, the other teams will also do the same. And then uh, when the team whose turn it is uh, has completed it, they'll show it to you. And then uh, if it's correct, they'll earn points. Now, uh, the, bear, the compound formula now uh, falls into uh, a second tier of point values. And uh, the second tier means that they'll double these point values for the compound formula. Uh, so they would, if they had it correct, it'd be 20 points plus the 30, be 50, and because it's uh, a more difficult task, we'll double that to give 100 points. Okay. Now the the more simpler tasks, like we did a moment ago, the anion space and the cation space, they just earn the face value of the card. Okay. So with compound formula writing, uh, they'll double point values. Uh, now like before, if the team whose turn it was had an incorrect compound uh, uh, written on their piece of paper that they showed you, uh, you'll announce again there's a chance to steal. And any other team who might have the correct response can earn those, in this case, 100 points. All right. Uh, same way we'll return the used cards uh, to the bottom uh, bottom of the deck, and then uh, the next person, um, next team uh, rolls the dice and play continues. Um, in addition to having a compound formula uh, on the level one, another space that you'll find on the board is that of formula weight. Now, formula weight, finding a formula weight is the focus of uh, lesson 17, so you'll have introduced. Uh, the procedures and steps for finding formula weights or molar masses, it means the same thing. And so this is where uh, the students will practice finding a formula weight of various compounds. So let's say a, a team had rolled the dice and let's say they're the airplanes here and they land on formula weight. So in order to do a formula weight you have to have a compound. So they'll draw a cation card and then they'll draw the anion card. In this case, we've got zinc sulfide will be the compound. And then so the students will then go about finding a formula weight of zinc sulfide. They'll write the, have to write the compound down first and then determine how many moles of each uh, components they have and then add those values to get the total formula weight. 
Now, because finding a formula weight, again, is even a more difficult task than just finding the compound formula, these point values then are tripled. So if the team was able to successfully come up with the formula weight for zinc sulfide, uh, in this case, uh, we would have 20 plus 20 would be 40, and then we'll triple that value so they'll earn 120 points if they have it correct. If it's incorrect, other teams uh, have the opportunity to steal those uh, points. Now, if you have a situation where no teams were successful in getting the correct answer, uh, what we generally do is we uh, put these cards back, back in the pile. Uh, you, with your students, you go ahead and you go over the process again and, and determine where these mistakes uh, were in their work. And then the team, whosever's turn it was, goes ahead and draws another uh, pair of cards and then does a formula weight again and play just continues as, as normal. And hopefully this time uh, they'll uh, be more successful in their calculations. Okay, now uh, those are the uh, basic uh, tasks that the students will find in level one. In level two of the game uh, there's this, the second game board, so you'll need to uh, do the same process of making photocopies of the board and then affixing it uh, to a surface which makes it lay flat on your table. Uh, you'll be doing level two uh, this time, and the added space on level two is uh, finding the percent composition of a compound. Now, this is level two, so it is uh, less than... It goes to less than 18. Let me find it here. Um, I went too far. Less than 18 uh, in the student book, which is finding percent composition of compounds. And uh, because uh, this is another additional step beyond finding a formula weight, uh, the point values earned for being correct in finding the percent composition of that compound or quadruple point value. So let's just do an example here. Uh, in this case, the student uh, drew a 10-4 and then the anion is oxide. So their job then would be to find the percent composition of 10-4 oxide. And in this case, it'd be 25 plus 10, uh, which would be 35 points. And we'll do that times 4, which I believe is 105 total points uh, for the round. So, uh, the, like I said earlier, the students are in charge of taking, uh, keeping track of their own points. And you can play to, to a goal, say 1,000 points or 2,000 points. Uh, there's really no end to the game. Uh, the students just go around and there's different uh, spaces on the board. There's like lose a turn and go forward or uh, like this one here when you get to this point, uh, this spot, you earn 50 free points and you get to roll again. And so you just make your way around the board as many times uh, as necessary to reach your point goal or a time limit or um, whatever you choose. Um, to make things a little easier for you as the instructor or the referee uh, person, uh, in the teacher's guide there is this uh, table, the two-page table of all the combinations of cards, anions and cations, and it will tell you, I don't know how close I can uh, get here, uh, uh, the different combinations, like if we have magnesium bromide, it'll give you the correct uh, compound formula, It'll give you the formula weight, and then it'll give you the value for percent composition. So uh, if you want to calculate those along with your students uh, for each round of the game, you're welcome to. Uh, but if you want a more quick uh, access to those, um, you can use these uh, answer keys. Um, obviously, you don't want your students to have access to these, but uh, this will help you uh, come up with the, the results a little more quickly for your students. Okay, so this is the uh, compound intensity game. Uh, like I said, it goes along with lesson 17 and lesson 18. It provides many, many opportunities for your students to practice. Uh, first, just identifying 
uh, the cations and anions. They practice at writing compounds of level one. They get practice finding formula weights, and then with level two, practice finding percent composition of compounds. This is a great game. Middle schoolers, high schoolers really enjoy it. It gets pretty exciting uh, when st students are able to steal points from other teams and it just encourages every student to uh, uh, work hard at having those uh, uh, anion and cation uh, symbols and charges memorized. Uh, if you find your students struggle with uh, getting those correct uh, go ahead and let them have access to their uh, master list of ions uh, in order for them to be somewhat successful at play in this game. So enjoy compound intensity. Uh, like always, if you have questions or concerns as you do any of these activities uh, in your friendly chemistry course, please let us know.